Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be installing Grub themes on our Grub bootloader for a Linux system. I'm using Ubuntu today, but this applies across other distributions as well. And it's especially great when you have multiple operating systems to select from. I have found a pretty great Fallout theme, which I'll be showing you how to install. We'll also learn a little bit about the Grub configuration file and some settings inside of that configuration file especially since by default the grub menu doesn't show up on most standard installs mainly only when you're dual booting a system or multi-booting a system let's first confirm that the grub menu is in fact popping up for this system so here in ubuntu i know it doesn't by default but i'm going to start a terminal anyway from activities now your system might already have the grub boot menu enabled you can check this out by just rebooting your PC and confirming that you get the menu after a reboot. Again, here I know that Ubuntu does not have it by default. And with that being said, make sure to smash that like button for me and take a moment to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and operating system videos. All right, the first command I want to run is in order to edit the grub configuration file, I'll do sudo space. I'll use some sort of an editor here, so vim is fine for me. I'll do forward slash Etsy, forward slash default, then forward slash grub. I'll type in my administrative password and it says vim wasn't found. That's because this is a brand new install. We'll need vim or you can use whatever text editor you personally like. So I'll just do sudo apt install space vim. Get that package real quick. Press enter. All right. And once that's done and I have vim now, I can do sudo space vim space forward slash etsy forward slash default forward slash grub i'll open this file up and now you can see plenty of things inside of here again use whatever text editor you are most comfortable in the very first thing i'm interested in is looking at this grub timeout style hidden what i want to do is in order to comment this out and to get the grub menu i have to do an insert by hitting i here in vim and then putting a pound sign or hashtag in front that will comment this line out that's perfect the next thing i can do is go down a line to the grub timeout so for the timeout it's currently set to zero seconds I'm going to change this to 10 seconds. That way I have some time to actually interact with the grub menu. Otherwise it can just automatically select an option for you a little bit too quickly. So those are really the two changes I want to make. Again, you don't have to be making these changes if your grub menu is already working fine. But for the purpose of this Ubuntu that I'm using today, I'll have to make these changes. I'll save and exit out of the file by doing colon X, pressing enter, and then a very important step here, in order for this configuration file to actually take, I have to do sudo update dash grub. Now this doesn't actually apply across the board for every Linux distribution, but here on Ubuntu, that's the command to use. On Arch Linux, I believe you have to do sudo grub make config, but you can look it up for your specific Linux distribution if you need to, of course, get grub working all right by running that that will generate a few new configuration files for us and add a boot menu entry all right now since i edited that grub config file i can do sudo reboot and make sure that i see the grub menu all right i'll do that real quick and as things are booting up i am shown this grub menu now i can select between ubuntu advanced options for ubuntu and the uefi firmware settings that's great. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. One thing I do notice here is the grub menu and console don't actually have the proper resolution. This should be filling the whole screen when starting up. So I'll make sure to set that up in the grub config after applying a theme as well. But it's something to make note of. I'll select my Ubuntu option and let things load back up. Once things are loaded again, I'll start a terminal up by hitting activities, typing in terminal, starting that up. And here in the terminal, I'll wait a moment while I search for something. And now I'm here on the gnomelook.org website. I'll post a link in the description below. The reason I'm here is because there's actually a grub theme section you can get grub themes directly from. They're easy to install, so I highly suggest this place. Of course, it's user submitted, so you'll want to make sure to check out their scripts. But anyways, go under the grub themes and we'll get a bunch of the latest themes listed out to us. What I'm actually wanting is to sort by the rating 
So if I click on that, I'll get the best rated grub themes here. And the first four look very good. The first two, it's kind of unfair because they actually belong to the same theme set. But uh, I'll disregard that. The fallout here is what I'm going for today, as we saw at the beginning of the video. Let's get the fallout theme by clicking on it. And if we scroll down a little bit, we see how good it looks. It gives us a little bit of an example. But before we get too far down, there is a link to the official GitHub page. That's actually what I'm interested in. So I'll click on that here on github.com. And a lot of these themes are gonna follow a very similar format. So you will be able to go through other theme sets and install them by yourself. These theme creators are great because they give you a very easy way to install and or update the theme. Really two ways here. First, you can get a install script and then check out that install script and then install it with bash. Otherwise, you can use this one liner to do all of that at once, minus checking out the script yourself. If you do want to check out the script to make sure that everything is good, you can also check it out by looking at the install.sh file here and making sure that it doesn't have anything crazy, nothing malicious. Uh, so what do they do? They ask about a language here. Depending on the language, they detect what type of system you have, whether it's legacy or UEFI, boot mode. They go down and check what type of distribution you have, because based on a distribution, you could have the configuration file in a different folder. So just look in here, the grub configuration file on a CentOS, Fedora, or OpenSUE seems to be in the boot grub2, grub.config, whereas in Ubuntu or Debian-based ones, are an Etsy default grub. And of course there's different update grubs. So I spoke about that a little bit earlier. See, they do update dash grub here for Debian, Ubuntu, and Solus. And then if it's Arch or Gentoo, they do grub dash MK config, make config, like I mentioned. Anyways, that all looks good. Then they get some kind of a theme file. That's a zip folder. Unzip that theme file, change directories, create new directories, copy the theme over and do a few other things here. So it looks good for me. What I'll do down here now is copy this line here in two, since it's just a one liner. If I copy that, we'll go back to the terminal real quick. And if you haven't already smashed that like button, we're going to install our first theme here. All right, back in the console, we can paste the one liner. So this is wget dash capital O here, dash some URL, which is the GitHub repo for the install script. And then we're gonna pipe that to bash. What this will do is run the install.sh script and we'll be asked a few questions. Now, if you're running something like Arch Linux, you'll want to make sure you have the wget package or else wget won't work. Of course, you'll run into an error trying to download this if it doesn't work. And then you'll also want the unzip package in order to run this. Pretty sure Ubuntu comes with unzip standard, but you can do sudo space app space install space unzip if you don't have it. All right, I'm gonna press this and it's asking for a password in order to get the file. I'll type in my administrative password. And now that it's gotten the file, it's running it. The first thing we're asked is what language do we want to use? Well, I'm going to use English so I can type in the number two. It's asking for a number, don't type in the name. Press enter after that. It'll take care of a few things. And at the very end, we'll notice something very similar to what we did earlier. What it says here is it's adding a theme to the grub config file. So we edited the grub config earlier. So you're aware of what it's editing. And it added this line here so we can check out the grub config and we will in a moment. But before we do that, we'll see that the rest of this is just generating those configuration files and finding images just like it did before, AKA running update grub, which is a good thing. I don't see any errors up above. Everything got extracted properly from what I can tell. Again, no errors. If there are any, it's probably because you're missing a library or package, make sure to get it. All right, I'm gonna clear things out and real quick, I'll go back into the Etsy default grub file. I want to throw sudo up in front of that. And now that I'm in, I'm looking through here and at the very end, you'll find grub underscore theme. They are pointing to a text file for the theme that has all the configuration for this fallout theme. So now you can see kind of what they've added in through the install script. Following that, I want to go to this line where it says grub underscore GFX mode. As I mentioned before, the resolution was not correct in the Linux console or the grub menu. I can actually fix that through here. If I take the comment 
out, so just remove the hashtag. Now I have a line. All I need to do in this section is add the proper resolution. So for me, it's 1920 by 1080, and I want 32-bit color depth. So I'll just put an X32 at the end here. That should cover everything for me. Of course, if your resolution is different, you can change these numbers accordingly. All right, this is getting exciting because we're almost there. Let's save and exit. And then again, make sure to do our magic line, sudo update dash grub. That should update our grub configuration. And now we'll do sudo reboot and make sure that our configuration and theme took place. All right, we have got our grub menu here. It looks absolutely great with the Fallout theme. It really sets it apart as well as fills the entire screen now. We've done a great job. And the Vault Boy here is giving us a thumbs up just like you should do right below the video. Let's load into our setup by hitting Ubuntu. Of course, if you have multiple different distributions in your Grub menu, you'll have various different icons. You can select between them by just going up and down, but you're already probably aware of that. Either way, I'm gonna press enter on Ubuntu. All right, we're back to our desktop here. And just to drive things home, let's install a second theme. All right, I'm right back at the gnome-look.org under the Grub theme section. I'm selecting the best grub theme here, an 8.9 currently, the grub theme VI mix. In here, this looks pretty slick and clean. Again, we have the GitHub page repo, so let's click on that. That loads up the GitHub page here, and if we scroll down, we can see various different options and some examples as well. So here, if we want to apply this to a 2K display, we can run this command. Otherwise, we can install it using this right here and even uninstall if we want to remove it. This one has a little bit more setup and settings, nothing really to worry about, but let's check out what various themes they actually have. So here's the VI Mix theme, Stylish theme, Tela, Slays. These are all great, so let's use one real quick. All right, to get the releases, we'll go back to the top and we see this releases section here. If we click on that, we can get the latest release Here's a zip folder we can download or a tar.gz, whatever you're more comfortable doing. I'll just do the zip source file and I'll save it here on the computer under the downloads folder. After it's downloaded, I'll open this up in a terminal here. So I can do this either by open in terminal or of course use the terminal to navigate to my downloads folder. Since that was a little easier, I'll unzip the file here in my downloads folder. If I type ls, I can see I have my zip file here. To unzip it, all I have to do is do unzip and then type in the zip file, press enter. Now if I do ls, I'll have a brand new folder with everything unzipped into it. I'm gonna change directories into that folder, open it up, I'll do ls, and now I see the various different directories and files, including the install script here. If I take a moment to look back at the install instructions, this is what it says to run in order to install things. So I'll copy that and then select one of these themes here. Which one do I want? I'm gonna try the Slays Grub theme. So back in the terminal, I'll paste in the install command, but I'll change Tela to the Slays theme because I wanna install that one instead. I'll press enter. It's gonna ask me for a password. I'll type that password in. Give it a few moments as it installs things. It said it installed for the 1080p, which is fine for me. Again, we see this here, which is the update grub process. And it says at the next restart of our computer, we'll see the new grub theme. Well, let me check out the grub configuration file once more, just to see what was done. Sudo vim in the Etsy default grub file. You already know how to do this at this point. And I'm going to go down here and see that the grub theme is now changed over to boot grub themes slays in the theme.txt file. Of course, if you want to investigate these themes further, you can check them out by going into this directory, seeing what's in the slays directory or whatever other theme you're using. They're all located under this boot grub themes, at least for the most part. Most creators like to stash them away in here because that's where they're meant to be. Since everything looks all right, I'll exit the file and do sudo reboot and let's check if that grub bootloader theme got changed. I'm gonna press enter, give it a few moments and boom, we have another beautiful theme set up here with a great grub background, a nice icon set 
and it looks very stylish here. A little more professional than the other one, but the other one really looked great in representing the Fallout game theme with Volt Boy on the side. One of my personal favorites, but that's about it. Now you know how to go through and install your own themes. At least you're getting comfortable with how to use those GitHub repos to pull down the theme and install it on your own. Let me know which themes you like using in the comments section below. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, post them below as well. Make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.